Hi everyone, welcome to our learning video sessions on Microsoft Excel for Chemical Engineers. This video lesson provides an introduction to Excel software. We get familiar with the key features and basics of the software before using it for calculations and analysis. First of all, we should understand why every engineer and undergraduate student have to learn Excel software. Excel is one of simple software tools that can be used for engineering calculations. Fluency in Excel provides a strong foundation for computer-aided chemical engineering fields and simulations using software like Aspen and MATLAB. Excel can easily handle data analysis and calculations. That means a huge amount of data can be analyzed including graph generation. The most important reason why we were compelled to prepare this video series is that every industry uses Excel as the basic software tool for their management and engineering operations. So the industry expects that a newly graduated chemical engineer should be fluent in Excel to efficiently work in their firms and companies. We can start Excel software through Microsoft Office package or double clicking on the Excel icon. Excel interface is in the form of worksheets or spreadsheets. We can create a new worksheet for this lesson. Worksheet means it's in the table form. We all know that every table has rows and columns. The beauty of Excel software is we can have infinite amount of rows and columns in a single worksheet. Rows are numbered using numbers starting from 1. Columns are marked by alphabetical order. The column next to Z is marked as AA and then AB and onwards. The space where each row and column meets is called as a cell. For examples, A1, C5, E10 are cells. Data entry, calculations and all other analysis are performed on these cells. Another aspect of Excel is we can insert multiple worksheets in a single file as per our requirements. First, let's try to do a very simple calculation. Let's say 8 plus 7. Note that whatever we just type on cells in Excel software are just taken as text only. So this time, 8 plus 7 is just an expression. We can't see any calculation result. In order to insert any calculation in a cell, first we have to type the equal sign. Now we can see the calculated answer is 15. And also note that Excel configures text aligned to the left side and numbers aligned to the right side in default. For example, if we type Y and 5, you can see the text is aligned to left side and the number is aligned to right side. This feature is useful to identify numbers and text separately as well as to avoid errors. Just like a typing error, if someone type 2 o instead of uh, 20, then the error can be easily identified. The main symbols that we should know to insert a calculation in Excel are plus mark for addition, minus mark for subtraction,
data mark for multiplication and slash for division and the hat mark for power and the brackets okay next let's see how to enter values in the cells for calculation for example let's say we want to enter pressure equals to 1 atm if we type like this pressure equal to 1 atm in a single cell we can't use it for any calculation in excel instead we should enter it like this having the value in a separate cell then the data can be used for calculations let's see another example density of water is equal to 1000 kilograms per cubic meter normally we should use symbols for physical properties in this case we know that density is marked by rho if we need to enter these latin symbols we can use symbols option in the insert tab we can select the font as symbols and type R similarly we can type A for alpha B for beta D for delta G for gamma and S for sigma and so on using the symbols font in this case we want to mark this as density of water where water should be subscript so i type water highlight it and there are two ways to do it right click and select format cells and check for subscript or select from the home ribbon font options and use subscript Similarly, we can use superscript option to mark cubic meters in the units. Also, we need to separate thousands by comma in our values. For that, we can right click on the cell and select format cells and select number as the type and check use thousand separator. Also, we can select the decimal places to be shown. In this case, we mark it as zero. So, no decimal places are shown in our result. If we want to show our values as scientific numbers, we can select the scientific option using format cells similar to selecting numbers as the type. Okay, now let's do a calculation to find the volume flow rate of water at 150 kilograms per hour. We know that volume flow rate is equal to density divided by mass flow rate. So we type the calculation as equal sign 1000 divided by 150. The answer is 6.666 cubic meters per hour. But this is not the best way to do this calculation in Excel. We can enter the calculation using the provided data in the cells. In this case, the cell numbers are shown in the calculation. So we can trace the accuracy of our calculation as well. Let's show the answer in decimal places we can see the final answer is shown as a roundup value now the beauty of excel is if we change any of the basic data 
The calculation is redone and show us the new answer. To see this, we can change the mass flow rate as 200, 250, as well we can change the density as 990. Now you can see a prepared table using Excel software. The table has columns showing the experiment name, sample number, temperature, volume flow rate used in each experiment, density, and calculated mass flow rate for each experiment. So this table shows some experimental results and calculations done using the experimental data. There are many experimental data in this table, so we can't see all the data in the given space. As you can see, if we scroll down, we can't identify which column corresponds to each data. Let's see how we can use table options in Excel software to handle a large number of data. First, let's say we want to see the calculated mass flow rate of experiment number 35. As the table is so long, the first row with table description disappears. So it can be difficult to find a specific data in this kind of a table. To avoid this difficulty, we can use the free spans option. Go to view tab and click on the free spans button. If we want to freeze only the first row, we can use the option related to that. As well, if we want to freeze only the first column, there is another option for that. In this case, let's freeze both first column and the first row. So let's select the cell B2 to mark that we need to freeze the rows and columns before the selected cell. Then click on the freeze fans option. Now we can see that we can easily navigate to any data in a very lengthy table because the table description is freezed. Next, let's say we need to sort some data in our table. For example, we want to sort the data from the smallest to the largest mass flow rate. Go to Data tab and click on the Sort button. Then the Sort window opens. Select Sort by Mass Flow Rate, Sort on Values, and the order as smallest to the largest. Make sure to check the box saying, My data has headers. Then the sort option excludes the top row and the first column. Ok, we can see our data has been sorted according to the mass flow rate. But the sample numbers are not in order. In this case, we can add a level to the sort option to sort the data by both mass flow rate and sample number. Click Sort button again and select Add Level. Then select by Sample Number and Smallest to Largest. Click OK. Now we can see our table is in a better order to see data. One more option needed to handle a lot of data is filtering option. Go to data tab and select filter button. We can see that nothing happens except there are arrows in each heading. Let's say we want to show only the data with 1000 kg per hour mass flow rate. So we click the arrow in the heading mass flow rate and check only the value 1000. Now we see only the data with 1000 kg per hour. The filtering option only shows us the required data as we selected and the other data are kept hidden. Another thing we might need is to show some data with special formatting. 
For example, let's take that we want to bold and color the data with mass flow rate of 1500 kilograms per hour. First select the related data set. For that we can use the conditional formatting tab in the home ribbon. You can see there are many ways to format our tables. You can play with them and practice by yourself later. For this example in this lesson, let's select a new rule. Then also there are many rule types. For this case, we select format only cells that contain rule type. Let's select format cells with cell value equal to 1500. Thereafter, click the format button and select font style as bold and fill a color. Then press OK. Now we can see that the data with 1500 mass flow rate are in the given formatting. We discussed few table options that can be used to handle a lot of data in Excel software. One last thing is, let's see what would be the possible errors happen during calculations in Excel software. The first error is, we have typed some text or an unusual character in the calculation formula. So the error shows as name with a question mark. If you see this error, you have to recheck the formula you typed for calculation. The second error is, for divisions, erroneously select an empty cell or dividing by zero. Excel shows you that you are dividing by zero. These are the major errors that can happen during calculations using Excel software. So as an introduction, we learned how to perform simple calculations in Excel software and some options in table formatting. Let's summarize what we learned in this lesson. Text and numbers should be entered in separate cells for calculations. Equal sign marks calculations in Excel. Calculations can be performed using the data entered on cells in the same Excel worksheet. Large number of data can be handled using table options in Excel software. That's the end of our first lesson. Have a nice day and goodbye.